explaining the rules. That was all me. So I love a short-sighted umpire. Seven people for nine days. If we got any more takers, please. Oh, uh, uh, we're picked. Take it away from the microphone. No, no, turn it away. It was facing your face. It's all right. It's supposed to kill you. Bleeding here. Bleeding from the ear is a very good look to get a job. Yeah, well, we don't yeah. be bleeding from any other orifices by the time we get to the end of the, uh, you know. Not with the long table. No. Great goes well with that jacket. On November the 26th, more than three metres of snow blocked the doors and windows of the Lion Inn in North Yorkshire, trapping five staff members and two lucky patrons. The weather conditions made it too dangerous for them to try and escape, and one staff member trapped inside the pub, which is said to be the highest pub in England, said that trapped men and women, and I quote, did everything they could to pass the time. <laughs> However, waitress Kate Underwood, sweet 18, said, we played board games. <laughs> and welded all the doors shut. <laughs> At the end of that round, five points, five points. Hey. And now a deep, devious and divisive yes. question. What is the question if the answer is New Zealand in 1927? Mm. New Zealand in Where? 1927. Where did Sandy McCutcheon hatch? <laughs> Point out for ages jokes against the moderator minus ten points. <laughs> okay, we did Sandy McCutcheon the pupate. Hold on, hold on. When did Sandy McCutcheon's grandparents what were they born? Oh, oh, I mean, I can't give a fifty-point bonus, but it's in my heart. <laughs> New Zealand in nine twenty-seven. You may be wondering. What will New Zealand look like in 2011? New <laughs> Zealand in 1927 is the crappiest episode of Doctor Who ever. New Zealand in 1927, um, where and when was Velcro invented? <laughs> what, was, what was declared, what was declared a Hobbit free zone? <laughs> You're saying my sexual dysfunction is a result of a past life as a sheep. Where? When? <laughs> when? When was the last time that sheep ruled the earth? <laughs> the sheepolithic period. Define period. And they collect <laughs> Sandy won't like that. Where, where? No, I'm fine with that. I left New Zealand. Where did Sandy McCutcheon hatch? <laughs> hey, Sandy. So you got the date, you got the date wrong. In purgatory. <laughs> Five seconds, any more takers on that one? No, no do the whole thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the, and this is going to the contentious part. Really? The Oxford English Dictionary has settled a long running dispute between Australia and New Zealand over who invented the pavlova. Uh, this meringue dessert was named after the Russian ballerina, of course, who visited both countries in the 1920s. Was that the arena cake? And many Australians have claimed that the first cooked pavlova was in 1928 in Australia. But however, after exhaustive research, you sure it was the Washington. Uh, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Sally Snotbrook. <laughs> Sally Snotbrook. Sally Snotbrook. <laughs> it's so interesting that Australia... Look, you don't need a hearing Gordon Gaytown? <laughs> it's interesting that... They, they all get desserts named <laughs> The denial on the team, they do not want to hear the truth that the first recorded recipe for a pavlova was New Zealand in 1927. Give it up for the Kiwis! Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure, McCutcheon. 
I trust the Pommy Oxford Dictionary. I just look at their cricket record. Yeah. Well, not not only the long term. Page sure. was the long term. Oh, claw back any respectability you can for you. Am I? Am I in the Australian cricket team? Two, batting at number three. That's yeah. exactly right. That's the whole thing. I don't know who sundries is, but they should. Breaking the willow. I don't know who sundries is, but they should move him up the batting order. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they've got enough room on the board for Scott Norman. Oh, come now. You'll be Scott. Anyway, the next, yeah. the next question is one much more in the comfort zone as we start this crew. What is the question? If the answer is the Happy Toilet Program. <laughs> You got an arts grant for what? <laughs> oh, and yeah, you score points. Is it the, um, sorry, is it the subtitle of the new children's book, Giggle While You Poo? Yes, I John gets half a point. The Woodford's would attempt to utilise its few remaining dry venues. <laughs> Uh, signs that the state government have got their priorities askew. <laughs> so, what's new on SBS in 2011? <laughs> Tony Abbott's new health incentive. <laughs> He's on at Artie Artie at 11. Another, uh, yet another shit US sitcom. <laughs> Where did Sandy McCutcheon hatch? No, that's that's right. Oh, sorry, Sandy. That's... You can lose points, you know. What is what is almost certainly a Japanese invention? <laughs> Have you told no. Me? Oh, has someone got another last-minute toilet-based human? Certainly, I don't. Look, in fact, Martin's about to lose a point for his Japanese insertion. Squeaky clean Singapore needs cleaner toilets and public awareness is one way to achieve it. They have la launched the Lou campaign called Let Us Observe Ourselves. Now, I don't want you to go into why are they putting video cameras in Singaporean Lou's, but one part of the campaign is called the Happy Toilet Program. If, if cameras around the the streets are called CCTV. Would that be PPTV? <laughs> if you have you got a point, then they nearly clapped. Yeah. If you're happy, I don't need them. I'm happy. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, clap your cheeks. <laughs> oh, John, story of your time. And and the amazing thing about this, the Lou campaign began in 19. Um, uh, 2008, mm. and I learned while researching this that the Restroom Association of Singapore was the founding member of an unlikely organisation called, and just don't we all want to join, the World Toilet Organisation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Membership forms were available on the side of the stage, and the chairman, John Thompson, will sign your application. <laughs> guess what we <laughs> He's just boasting it was not a man. Don't talk to the man, John just encourages them. You fill out the forms in, in we, it would be like invisible ink. <laughs> Only if you're eating a lot of lemon. Pineapple for that. Did all of you as children try secret writing with oh, we, we and, yeah. and lemon? I never tried writing anything. Sure, not, not even your name. In the snow? No. I like having a wee at public urinal. Or urinal. Um, and this, you know, the cigarette stuff is going on, they help it along. And they... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's you like the song in the This is, it's, it's, it's uh, cigarette bar hockey. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's very good. <laughs> I don't try to help it along, I try to blow it to peace. <laughs> share a house with someone who's, that was his attempt at cleaning the toilet. He was just trying to wee around the side of the bowl. If you could just 
slugs to chunks. <laughs> Is that your idea of holding your own penis? <laughs> Who um, went? At, they were they were uh, adventurous girls, to put it mildly, and they went out on this big boat um, called the Mariba. And the sailors on the boat were making fun of them because they were saying, "Oh, you know, where do you go to the toilet? We just peer up the side. Ah, oh, you're just standing up." At which point, Lucy explained that she knew how to do that and taught it to the other Lucy. And the crew all went and hid in the cabin. And the two girls being standing up. So, <laughs> Moving on from I think the next act is ready. That's, this, in fact, is the demonstration of how to do it. <laughs> so those of you who can't see, Playboy has just donated to Woodford a comely model. Yeah. No, no, underwear would be. The Virgin right. Sacrifice has arrived. <laughs> Stand, standards have dropped somewhat. Excuse me, you underwear wasn't were... optional. <laughs> you didn't tell us they were going to be thrown. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. I like an enthusiastic groupie. That's fantastic in this day, isn't it? In an attempt to get it away from the toilet humor, but when I look at what the question is and what the answer is, I doubt that we can do it. Yeah, because there are some boastful men here. But what is the question if the answer is 46 centimeters? <laughs> it was the women who laughed. Yeah. Yeah, the length of Bill Clinton's cigar. <laughs> the, the average length of the male pee fowl. How much? What? So that was pee fowl, the bird. Yeah. All right. The entire bird. Yeah. How much progress do 12 council workers make on a new highway during a 16-hour shift? <laughs> And the bastards, they put out those 80 mile roadworks, 80 kilometers, and there's nothing for miles. The <laughs> during the term of the Rudd government, <laughs> during the term of the Rudd government, how much closer did Australia get to a decent climate change policy? <laughs> during the term of the Howard government, how much closer did Australia get to South America? <laughs> Centimeters, the length of the gap between Sarah Palin's ears. <laughs> the, average, the average length of the Australian male peanut. What one's best man at my wedding? Say that again. I'm just saying. I was laughing. What one best man at my wedding? Uh, what? 46. It's <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify things. What is the question of the answer is 46 centimetres? The average size of the Australian male penguin. If a centipede took 46 steps, how far would it have travelled? <laughs> just one for the kid. No, 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 no. That's cute. Yeah. Any other takers? Don't let him see the group again. Oh, I think I've got one. You've in, got one. In centimetres, how much is 18.1 inches? Oh. Now, that, that, a a no, that, was a, that was a slow cheer. That was a slow cheer. You imperialist. This is the one that I put on because I knew that Martin would love the, the mathematics and the science of all of this. It's the amount. Yeah. by which engineers managed to correct the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Oh. The Leaning Tower of Pisa has been... You had that one. Oh, John, so close. <laughs> Armed with chisels and lasers and all sorts of things, they restored and cleaned 24,000 blocks of this 56-metre uh, uh, tower, but only managed to correct it 46 centimetres. It has been leaning for a very long time, four meters. But they got it back 46 centimeters. Let's give it up with the engineers <laughs> in Italy. Yeah. Yeah. You say, they're trying to straighten the leading tower, please. 
tourists. Yeah. The local tourists. <laughs> 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 Let's ruin the tourist attraction. But it was in danger of falling down. Right. Really? Yeah. 46 centimeters is going to make a huge amount of difference. <laughs> yeah. As the bishop He's telling me, baby. As the bishop said to the actress at the time. At the end of that round, Fiona and Martin, 29 points. Anthony and John, 31. I don't think they've tasted it in the enough yet. And now to go where no, no man or woman dares to go before. The next game is called Off the Cuff. Uh -huh. Is he bluffing? Anthony Aykroyd will yes. describe to us what he is doing, or will be doing, or should be doing with his panking pole. <laughs> 46 centimetres. But, uh, <laughs> panking pole? Panking. P-A-N-K-I-N-G. P-A-R-P-A-N-K. Panking, yeah. Oh, it's the <laughs> term, but not the other one. Uh, no, seriously, guys, the panking poll is a form of uh, political focus group uh, invented by Edward Panking. It was used extensively by ex-Prime Minister Kevin Rudd uh, to estimate his popularity and um, his assistant, Edward Panking, would come in and come and say, what's happening? And uh, Edward would say, oh, nice. And uh, that was the only response from the Panking Poll. No, the Panking Poll, seriously, is a uh, political polling um, uh, instrument used in... It's actually, uh, it's actually much further away from that. It's over in Denmark. You, you'll have seen this, the Netherlands. That's the what Netherlands. I was getting to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And because uh, that's probably what yours is named after, uh, Panking being the name given to the, to the pole uh, that they use for crossing ditches. Yeah. And what they do is they run, it's a very long pole, they run with the pole, they drive the pole into the water in the ditch, they, the pole goes forward like this, at which point they clamber up the top of the pole, hold on, and then teeter forward to the far side of the ditch. Yeah. And it's international sport over there in the, in the Netherlands. Uh, the painting pole is, is uh, there's a stall selling them up there. <laughs> to get them back to your car. <laughs> Hey, no, no, he got uh, points. He got points. Oh, sorry, I'll you just should. shut up. You oh, just no, go no. ahead. You keep going, ignore the nasty and see. <laughs> Mr. Hostile. <laughs> yes, Fiona, sorry. The sympathy vote. Fiona, I'm going to try. My, uh, my, I was under the, perhaps, illusion that the uh, painting pole did actually originate in Amsterdam and uh, was one of the objects that were used by the ladies of the night in Amsterdam to uh, display themselves upon. Uh, it's a reduction from spanking and uh, they kind of just sort of writhe around it in the, uh, the red box, which is the um, Dutch word for spanking, the, the pole panking dan pole. The pole dancing pole. Panking pole. Yes. Yes, yes. I think you'll find that in 19th century Ballarat, <laughs> um, competitions were held each year between the gold miners and um, whoever could uh, attract most, most gold into his, his pan was named the Pan King for that year. Right, so let me tell you that, in fact, does it, did anyone think that anyone was superb with that? Did anyone get any extra votes? No, right. <laughs> You've got to be quick. You set the panking pole rather high there. <laughs> Is anyone superb? Yeah. The panking pole, as all the audience know, is a device for harvesting cider apples. <laughs> Panking pole the gold. With a P R. When I say gold, I mean gold and delicious. <laughs> when I say Dutch, I mean blend orange. <laughs> and when I said political poll, I meant what you just said. <laughs> when I said spanking, I actually meant spanking. <laughs> but when you said lady of the night, you meant Granny Smith. <laughs> Anthony and John on 
34, it's not even high five. Fiona and Martin on 38. Bunch of pankers. <laughs> but classy pankers. The next round is Quack Like a Duck. Anyone not know how that is played? <laughs> Watch and learn. Crack like a duck, Martin on this side, John on this side. To start with, we'll sing in the voice of an animal suggested by you. And please, an animal that actually makes a noise would be a real, uh, a real bonus. And not just a noise where it gets run over. <laughs> Play and they have us. two minutes to sing as many songs as possible, and they can either pass or move on to the next song. Uh, and then, then we swap over, and the other member of the team does the same thing. So let's have the cat. Thank you very much. Very quick cat in there for John. <laughs> and John, please sing to your partner. Starting something romantic. <laughs> starting now. <laughs>
A chihuahua. A chihuahua. Sometimes dogs smell. Woof, woof, woof. Woof, woof, woof. Jesus Christ, do this stuff. Woof, 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 Word. 
One of the envelopes did have the correct definition inside it. One of these people will be telling the truth. The other three will be trying to fool you. They get extra points if at the end of, the, of this round, you vote as correct one of the ones that's fooling you. Nudie assertion. Let's go first to someone who stopped. Writing. Martin. Uh, Nudius. Nudius Tertian uh, is the, what do you call it, the act of fitting people uh, into a small space. So many people, not just one person. So when, remember when the university students used to do things like try to fit 20 people into a Fiat Bambino or a Volkswagen or something of that nature? They do it with smart cars now. Uh, it's much harder because you can't actually fit one person in the smart car. <laughs> and try to smash her, and it's not so much getting into it as putting it on. <laughs> However, that's nothing to do with the actual thing. Hey, so you get, if you get 50 university students and you jam them into a telephone box with all the legs down the out, uh, <laughs> that's called New Year's session. Thank you very much. John Thompson, what's your suggestion to this? Um, I'm, I'm fairly confident of this. A, a New Year's session is a deflowered nun. <laughs> Yes, John. <laughs> Can be habit forming. That's just out of order. Hey, uh, can I sock it to them, baby? Yeah. yeah that's a stretch. Uh, let's go to Fiona. Fiona, what's Nudia Sturgeon? Uh, Nudia yeah. Sturgeon is clearly uh, a contraction of new day assertion so what it means is that it's the day before yesterday because there are <laughs> Put it in the limerick if you want to. First, uh, 
first limerick, the first line oh, right. is done by one person, the second line by the second person, the third person does the two middle lines, yeah. and the final person does the fourth line. We'll start with Martin tonight. Let's see that one. And Martin, your, your topic, your limerick, is folk singers. Oh, well, which way are we going, by the way? Towards you. Towards you. Okay. Right. Um, we'll just stop, because there's no one over there. Yeah. <laughs> An old fella sang a sad song. And he made it go for too long. Two middle lines. He plucked his string and undid his thing. <laughs> they were bored, so he whipped out his schlong. <laughs> See, uh, I set you up there. You had to be strong right from the beginning. I went with my strengths. <laughs> and we go next to Fiona Scott Holland, and your subject is comedians. Comedians. Oh. Or comics, if you like, it's easier. Because <clears throat> there's so much difference. Yes, huge. Uh, yeah, massive. Um, uh, the, there was a, a comic on stage. Who fell into a frightening rage. He roared and he screamed, fell asleep and he dreamed. Of a much more comedian age. <laughs> 1927. <laughs> New Zealand comedy still. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I mean, yes. in order to repay you for all those kind New Zealand things and Enhance your your pank, pole panking. Um, your subject is pole dancers. Pole dancers. It's okay. It's tall. It's strong and erect. <laughs> I use an approach that's direct. <laughs> One leg near the ceiling, but done with true feeling. And I get the audience to select. <laughs> Very nice work indeed. John Thompson, the striptease artist. I like to cavort in the nude. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's right, we're doing it. Let's just play sorry. the game, please, John. I like to cavort in the nude. You're such an outrageous young dude. You're so uh, dapper and taut, uh, all the magic you've wrought. But in barrel, it's considered quite rude. <laughs> At the end of that round, Fiona and Martin, 45 points. Anthony and John on 46 points. <laughs> close. Very close. The next, oh, game, yeah. the next game is the microphone is on. If one of you would like to care to, maybe, uh, Martin, would you set up the microphone, please? Uh, our players will offer suggestions as to lines that they would like to hear in certain circumstances. And they please remember to applaud frequently and often and all the rest of it because they only get points where you applaud their sharp, witty uh, kind. It's going to be a slow night. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is the standy uppy one. one. Oh, okay. this is the standy uppy one. And we're going to start with the most most favourite topic from last year, it's making its reappearance this year by popular demand. Things you will not hear from the next tent. <laughs> or don't want to hear. Don't want to hear. 677 ukuleles. <laughs> meat must have meat. <laughs> Stuck in their penis. <laughs> My name is 
，你咁樣對啊，要叫你咩法啊？俾你做大。Kevin Rudd practicing his speech. No offense, but uh, Bob and Blanche. <laughs> Luckily, they've left. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it, mate. We'll just rip it off the ball prick in the next tent. <laughs> Invasion plans. <laughs> Me. Experimental. 
procedure that uh, involves transplanting a pig's penis. <laughs> You'll let me know when my mallet finds the tender bit. <laughs> oh, it's not meant to do that. Terrible news. I'm afraid you're allergic to Byron Bay organic donuts. How long have I got, Doctor? Ten. Months or years? Nine. Young chap. 